Today we're going to be taking our Taurus 856 Defender and installing a Viridian laser grip on this gun. Now the 856 Defender series is a really great option for concealed carry and adding a visible laser only makes it better. A visible laser has tons of advantages. It allows you to keep both eyes open when you're aiming. It allows you to stay focused on the threat instead of looking at the front sight post. And it also allows you to have a fine aiming index if you're having to fire the gun from a compromised position like a close in retention position or laying on your back or something like that. Now the 856 Defender Series, this is our 3 inch 38 special model. These installation instructions will work regardless of which small frame Taurus revolver you're using, whether it's a 605, an 856 like we have here, or a 905. These instructions won't work on the 605 poly protectors, however, because they utilize a different grip architecture. If you have a gun that doesn't have this Hogue grip, but rather has the compact Taurus rubber concealment grip, to remove that grip, you're going to need a mallet and a 3 8 punch. And you'll just use the mallet to drive the grip retention pin out, and then you can slide that grip off. However, what we have here is a Hogue grip, which has a single screw in the bottom of the grip that we're gonna remove to go ahead and pull this grip off the gun. Once we have that screw backed out, we will go ahead and pull the grip straight down and away from the frame all the way clear of the gun. We can go ahead and set that aside. Now what we have here is the grip saddle. This is what the hoe grip rides on to actually line up properly with the frame. We can go ahead and just remove that. This pin may drop free. You may need to use your mallet and 3 8 punch to drive it out, depending on how much tension the roll pin has in it. We wanna set this aside though. We don't wanna lose this pin. If we lose this pin, we're gonna have a bad time. So we're gonna go ahead and set that pin aside. We're gonna remove the grip saddle. And now we've fully removed the Hogue grip from this gun. And again, if you have a different model grip than this, say one of the VZ grip models uh, or the standard compact grip, there's different methods for removing those. We covered the standard compact grip. The VZ grip, you'll need to unscrew the side screw on the VZ grip and then gently pry that grip apart before you can remove it. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and unbox our Viridian laser here. Remember, when you're working with any sort of laser technology, you want to be very conscientious of where the laser is oriented. Lasers can damage people's eyes relatively easily. So we're going to go ahead and remove all of the literature that we have with this, as well as our handy instructions and make sure that you don't lose this little Allen key that comes with your, with your Viridian laser because this key is what you're gonna use to adjust your laser zero. If you lose this, it might be hard to find another Allen wrench quite this small to make sure that your laser is appropriately zeroed for your point of impact. But we're gonna set that aside for now. We're gonna take a look at our Viridian green laser grip. So as you can see, the grip comes in two halves. The way it comes in the box is we already have some screws run through the grip. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and remove those before we continue the installation process. I find it's helpful to orient the screws where they would have come out. So the one that I take out of the top left, I'm gonna to put to the left. The one that comes out of the top right here is gonna to go to my top right. And the one that comes out of the bottom of the grip relative to me is going to go to the bottom when I place them on my workbench. Now that we've pulled out our screws, we can go ahead and separate the halves of the grip. 
The Viridian grip comes with the batteries pre-installed, which will allow us to function check this laser a lot quicker than we would if the batteries weren't pre-installed. So with a pre-installed battery, you should also take this moment to write down whatever type of battery your laser grip uses. That way you can go out and run out and buy a set of Duracell replacements immediately, as those are generally well thought of and highly recommended. So to function tech check our laser, we've got two important components. Down here at the very bottom, we have the master arm switch. Forward is in the on position, back is gonna be the off position. With the laser's arm switch in the off position and I press the button here on the front, the activation switch, nothing happens. When I move the master arm to the forward position and press the activation, we see the visible red laser immediately. This means that when you establish a firing grip on the gun, that visible laser should activate, giving you a clear aiming reference on where you have this gun indexed. Now that we've function checked our laser to make sure it's working before we install it, we're gonna actually go ahead and move on to the installation phase. Now the neat thing about this Viridian laser's design is that it does replace that roll pin that holds the other grip on by running a screw through that slot on the frame. We do still wanna keep that roll pin just in case we ever decide to remove this grip and go back to a more traditional grip because you'll need it when you reinstall your old grips. So to get started, we're gonna go ahead and take the 856 and we're gonna place it into the right side of the grip frame, making sure that it lines up with the stops here at the bottom and here at the back, as well as fully forward. You want the, the right side of the laser grip to mate up nicely with the frame here, and again, to line up with these stops here and here. Now we can go ahead and take the left side and you notice it's got these pins on it. These pins are gonna go through and they're gonna match up with holes in the right side grip and you're just gonna press those together. Now it's time to go ahead and put the screws through and tighten those on to make sure that the laser grip is ready to go. We're gonna start with the top left screw. I'm gonna drop that in place drop our top right screw in place, and then we're gonna drop the bottom retention screw in place. That one may take a little bit of work to get it to go through. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and tighten these one at a time, starting with the bottom, just till it gets basically hand tight, then moving up here to the top left. Just till it gets hand tight and then finishing with the top right. Now we're not, gonna over, we're not gonna fully tighten these yet because once you get them hand tight, I wanna roll this revolver over and make sure that there aren't any major gaps either in the back of the grips or in the front of the grips. Everything should be mated up relatively nicely with the possible exception of here where the actual laser activates. Again, before we fully tighten these down, we're also gonna go ahead and retest that laser to make sure that it's working, to make sure that once it's actually in place, it'll continue to function. So we're gonna flip that master arm forward and we're gonna go ahead and using our middle finger, we're gonna go ahead and activate that grip laser and we wanna be able to see the visible laser right there. If you keep your finger off the trigger, you'll block the laser. Trust me, your laser's still working. You can just move your finger and you'll see it. Now you can go ahead and turn the laser back off, which is what I like to do to save batteries in this situation. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and tighten the rest of these screws down. If you have a torque wrench or a torque head for your screwdriver, 10 inch pounds is a good torque standard for this. However, if you don't, you can go ahead and just make sure that they're tight enough about like that, which is a real technical measure, but you wanna make sure you're not over tightening them because that can warp the grips. You're gonna make sure it's snug to hand tight and then maybe go a, ha a quarter to a half turn beyond that to make sure it's been fully tightened down. And that is about it. Now that you've got your Viridian grip laser installed, you're gonna to wanna to go to the range to get it zeroed to make sure that your point of impact is appropriate to your point of aim. However, that can be a time consuming process. So we're gonna show you a little trick to get your gun started on that zero process right here in the studio or in the comfort of your own home before you have to get out to the range and start burning up live ammo. One of the advantages to a visible laser is that you can actually see where the laser is in space. Now, I would normally recommend doing this on a wall that is at least five yards, 
preferably seven yards away from you. But in this confined space, we'll give you an idea of what that looks like. So to make this happen, you're gonna go ahead and aim in on the wall using your iron sights, and then you're gonna activate the laser and see what the deviation is between the laser and between your iron sights, and then adjust the laser so that it hits where your iron sights are pointed. We're gonna grab our teeny tiny little wrench, and on the Viridian, we have two points of adjustment. Right here on the top, this is going to adjust our elevation on the laser, and here on the side is going to adjust the windage on our laser. If I go ahead and put this in, make sure it's in there, and we activate the laser, you can see that turning it is moving the laser to the right and then back to the left. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that sight picture and I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the windage of this laser until it's dead on behind my front sight post. Then, same thing, I'm gonna put the Allen key right here in the top of the grip. We're gonna get that sight picture again on my aiming reference and we're gonna adjust the laser until it pops up just over the top of my front sight, just like that. So that's a hasty in-home zero that you can throw on this, where you'll have the laser appear just over the tip of your front sight post, so that when you go out to the range and finish your zeroing process in live fire, it'll take less time.